Okay, so uh, some people aren't going to be able to make the, the Zoom review session, so this is going to be a micro review of Palooza in less than 10 minutes. I'm not going to cover everything, but I'm going to cover things that people commonly miss. All right, so everybody knows like the determinants of demand and focuses on demand increasing. People tend to forget about supply increasing, so more producers leads to greater supply, but the big thing is change in the cost of resources. So higher input costs, labor, uh, materials, shipping, et cetera, higher costs leads to less supply. Okay, if costs, especially costs to materials and oil and gas, those go down, that can allow for an increase in supply. So make sure you know that government regulations is a supply issue. Okay, so if they put restrictions on uh, harvesting salmon in Puget Sound, that would impact the salmon market, obviously. Make sure you know what happens to price and quantity for all four shifts, uh, increase and decrease. Then also know what happens with the double shifts, that something is indeterminate. So price, demand and supply shift, something's indeterminate. Okay, something changes for sure something's indeterminate if there is a double shift. Okay. All right, moving horizontally. Uh, increase in fixed costs. Remember that if there's an increase in fixed costs, there's no change in marginal costs. And if there's no change in marginal costs, there's no change in quantity. Because as we know, marginal revenue equals marginal cost is the quantity of max profit. So in other words, if fixed costs change, there's no change in marginal cost and therefore the firm won't change its quantity. If there's an increase in variable costs, that'll increase marginal costs. Their intersection will be earlier and there'll be a decrease in the output by the firm. Where MR equals MC is max profit, as we mentioned, if MR is greater than MC, then produce more. So here on the graph, you can see Mr. Dark is here. If marginal cost is here and marginal revenue is here, then we might be at a quantity of 80. We'll increase it to where MR equals MC. If MR is less than MC, that means we have this situation where the marginal cost is greater than the marginal revenue. That means we should decrease our quantity, produce less in order to maximize profit. Know your five different intersections. I didn't include diminishing marginal returns, which is at the lowest point on marginal cost, but we've got MR equals MC, Mr. McProfit, allocative efficiency, price equals marginal cost, where marginal cost hits the demand curve. Okay, remember price is always on the demand curve. Purple monkeys chase after everybody. My cousins are the coolest people ever. Productive efficiency. Productive efficiency, most important in determining excess capacity. Okay, all right. Uh, and that's also at the lowest point of ATC. That's also going to be the long run price, okay, uh, and long run quantity for perfect competition. So make sure that you know that. Uh, price equals average total cost is normal profit. Okay, thank you, Caitlin O'Donoghue. Normal people aren't that crazy. Normal price, average total cost. Normal people aren't that crazy. Good way to remember it, thank you. The intersections are demand and the average total cost curve. Remember, normal profit is when economic profit equals zero. What class is this? This is economic. So every what graph we do is an economic profit graph. Where MR equals zero, that's unit elastic, also highest total revenue. Okay. Moving horizontally as we go. Elasticity of demand. Don't forget the equations. Price elasticity of demand is the most important one. Percent change quantity demanded over percent change in price. If it's got an absolute value greater than one, it's elastic. Absolute value equal to one, it's unit elastic. Absolute value less than one, it is inelastic. Elasticity means responsiveness. Elastic, sell trapo, substitutes expensive, luxuries, total revenue and price opposite. Nine traps, inelastic. Remember the second letter will tell you if it's elastic or inelastic. Nine traps, no substitutes, inexpensive. Necessities, total revenue and price go the same direction. Income elasticity of demand. Know the formula, but 
Income elasticity of demand is about inferior and normal goods. Positive is a normal good. Negative is an inferior, inferior good. Ramen noodles, McDonald's hamburgers, inferior goods. Cross elasticity of demand tells us that the good is a substitute or a complement. Remember, if you hear that your teacher is not going to be here, your initial guilty reaction is cool. Mr. Gallo's not here today. I get to listen to music. Okay. I get to listen to Olivia Rodrigo play Driver's License. Okay. Or sing Driver's License. I like that song. It's a guilty favorite. You know, it's good. What are you going to do? All right. Uh, here's our graph for perfect competition. You should know, Mr. Darp, if there's a profit, right, firms are going to join the industry. Supply increases over here, pulling the price down. As we mentioned before, the long run price is going to be at where MC equals ATC, and we get to the long run equilibrium. Your average total cost is going to be at the quantity of max profit. So here it's hard to see, but the average total cost would be eight, price 10, and then the profit is this narrow strip of land. Okay. Uh, down below, I've got monopolistic competition. How do I know it's monopolistic competition? The relatively elastic demand curve. Remember, monopolistic competition is differentiated goods, clothes, shoes, restaurants, local dry cleaners, etc. It does also, I wrote the long run equilibrium graph up here. Okay, firms do join and lead the industry and eventually create an equilibrium, at least in theory. And we end up, excess capacity is from max profit to productive efficiency. Okay, so that is where MC, this is where productive efficiency is most important. Okay, moving on. Here's the graph for a monopoly, okay? We know it's a non-discriminating monopoly initially because of the marginal revenue slicing down underneath, okay? Where MR equals MC is max profit. Remember, price is always on the demand curve. What is 10 here? 10 is not the price, okay? MP stands for max profit, MR equals MC. Here I've got MC equals ATC, that is the productively efficient quantity. Here I've got MR slicing through, unit elastic, also highest total revenue that also separates the uh, elastic and inelastic regions. So a monopoly is always going to be in max profit in the elastic region, remember E, U, I, everybody under the influence of the Holy Spirit. All right, then I've got allocative efficiency where MC hits the demand curve, and then just past it here, the graph didn't work out the way I wanted, but that's the way it intersected here is normal profit, okay? That is the last quantity at which a firm will uh, be able to earn a profit. After that, they're gonna start earning economic loss, okay? This triangular region, as we know, is dead weight loss. This triangular region up here is the consumer surplus. Okay. Uh, if, and only if, this becomes a discriminating monopoly, pretend like this marginal revenue curve doesn't exist. I've got a new Mr. Darm. He is back. Now where MR equals MC is all the way over here. And every person in a discriminating monopoly pays what they're willing and able to pay, think college tuition, until MR equals MC, okay? So now they're producing all the way to the allocatively efficient quantity, okay? But there is no consumer surplus anymore because consumers are paying what they're willing and able to pay, all right? Uh, this is the best situation for the monopoly because they're getting all this additional revenue. All the consumer surplus becomes producer surplus. The consumer does benefit in one way. More people are able to purchase. So this core segment of the demand curve is able to purchase the good. They weren't able to purchase or weren't part of the uh, demand before. Okay. 
And if you see something like perfectly discriminating monopoly or, you know, single price non-discriminating monopoly is a regular monopoly. Perfectly discriminating monopoly is just a discriminating monopoly or a perfectly natural discriminating monopoly. It's just discriminating monopoly. Don't let things confuse you. Okay, that's the best I could do in 10 minutes. I gotta get over the table and turn this off.